You might remember in the last video, we took a deep dive into MB, solid feature-rich media server that sits somewhere in between open source and commercial. Well, today we're taking a look at Jellyfin, the open source fork that decided to, you know, break away from all of that and give you full control, no subscriptions, no strings attached. Hey folks, how's she going today? Zach Perry back here with 45 Home Lab. We've covered Plex in the past and just recently MB. So today it's time to take a look at Jellyfin, you know, getting all three of the, uh, the main big three covered there. And this one's gonna be a bit different because Jellyfin started as a fork of MB back in 2018 when MB switched from open source to a more closed source proprietary sort of model. Um, so the community wasn't too happy about that. So they picked up the last open release uh, rewrote huge portions of the code and turned it into a completely free and open source alternative. No licenses, no premier upgrades, no cloud lock-ins, nothing like that. Just your media, your server, and full control over how it's run. And we'll be installing Jellyfin on our HL15 2.0, running Ubuntu 22, same as before. And this setup, it can handle pretty much any workload you throw at it from media servers to AI workloads. Thanks to that direct wired architecture, as I mentioned with the HL15 Beast, it's the same in the 2.0 here. And like with MB, the HL15's 15 bay backplane gives you that 450 terabyte raw storage using 30 terabyte drives. And you're storing uh, Blu-rays, 4K, it can handle all of that, no issue. Again, we're running OpenZFS, so our data is protected against any sort of corruption or data loss or drive loss. <laughs> so your Jellyfin library stays safe and intact for the long haul and it protects in spin rot. You know, for that series uh, that is sitting on your server that you've been meaning to watch for the past five years but hasn't been accessed once, that's safe too. And we'll be using Docker Compose again because it's simple, portable, and easy to replicate. This is very similar to our MB Docker Compose. The only things we're really gonna change in this one are our, we're gonna swap the image obviously, so Jellyfin slash Jellyfin latest, replace uh, our MPUID slash PGID with user 1000 add UDP ports 7359, optionally 1900, add a slash cache volume, and simplify devices to just slash dev slash DRI. Now, if we were gonna slap A4060 in this, we'd obviously change that a bit, but Besides that, that's just about everything we're gonna change. Now, when it comes to performance and impressions, uh, I have spent a bit of time with both MB and Jellyfin, and here's where they kind of diverge for me. So MB feels more like a it's polished in some areas, particularly around the admin dashboard, but Jellyfin makes up for it with its absolute transparency. Every feature MB locks behind its premier tier, like hardware transcoding, mobile sync, or advanced metadata editing. Uh, Jellyfin just gives you that by default. And with the right hardware acceleration, things like VAAPI and VENC or AMF, Jellyfin can transcode 4K streams without breaking a sweat. And on our HL15 test box, we have our RTX 4060. It's easily handled multiple 4K to 1080p uh, transcode, barely touched the CPU. Where Jellyfin really shines is its community-driven updates. There's no corporate roadmap or monetization layer. Um, anywhere is to be seen. So updates are fast, frequent, and really responsive to user requests from what I've seen. Now, that also means it's not always as plug and play as Plex or MB for that matter, but for Home Labber, Home Labber, that is part of the fun. You can tweak, customize, theme, automate to your heart's content. You can with those other options too, but I find they're a bit more limited. All right, so now that we have our actual Jellyfin Docker, Docker container, I guess so, but Docker Compose file, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, fixed up here. Let's just take a quick look at what I was referring to when I mentioned, we're gonna change a few things. So let's take a look at our Docker Compose. Docker Compose handle. So we see, actually funny enough, um, we changed it, but we didn't change everything that we needed to. Some people are already probably seeing this right now. It's like, oh, you got a mistake there. So let's fix that up actually. So. Top of it is called MB there. So let's actually just change that to Jellyfin and then we can start this up. Jellyfin and let's spell it properly. There we go. So then we just have our image name. So Jellyfin slash Jellyfin, our container name, the user, 1000, 1000. Um, that is if we're doing re or our 
Zach user, which is um, what I'm not using. I'm using root right now, which I know there's people that are like, why are you doing this? It's so unsafe. Test environment, thankfully, but uh, as I say, not as I do, um, best practice, always use a non-admin user for anything that is, of course, um, uh, important, even non-important. Just don't do what I'm doing. Besides the setup. <laughs> so let's get that done here. So we'll right quit that. And let me see. From there, we will actually, let's bring our container down just to show what that whole process looks like. So let's do Docker Compose down here. So we're inside of our container, resource still in use. So we change that up there. So what we need to do is, let's see, Docker Jellyfin. So we'll stop that there, and then we'll do a quick docker ps, see if it's up there, which it is not. So then we will do a docker compose up dash d. Now, alternatively, we could have uh, just went in and reconfigured or just blew out that network that it's talking about there, but this should work here. If not, we'll go ahead and do that. So docker compose up dash d. Warn orphan jellyfin found for this project. If you remove the service in your compose file, you can run this command with remove orphans flag. So let's actually go through that right now. And docker compose, already new spike container. Do, do, do. Yeah, there we go. So all we did there was we went in and so I'm just messing around with the network there. And this is test VM. We just did an RM on the container image itself, or the container itself, redeployed. And now if we do a docker compose or docker ps, we'll see here that it is in fact healthy. It's available at port 8096. So let's go there now. And let's go 10.0.90. No, that's definitely not it. So let's go right here. There we go. So once we go in, you're going to be met with a lot of the same stuff that we were with MB, um, where you're going to be making a bunch of configuration choices there. Um, so very, very similar there, but let's actually go through and see what things look like. All right, so now that we're logged in, we can see what we have. Very similar to how um, MB was kind of displaying everything, how it's set up. Um, again, didn't put any actual movies on here, just a lot of pictures of my face that I don't want to look at it right now, and a lot of you, I'm sure, do not. So let's actually go through and look at the dashboard here. And you can see very similar to how MB is set up. So um, again, that's because it is a fork of it. So they're going to be pretty similar in how, they, um, uh, how they're used. But again, there's none of that premier subscription or anything like that. We can see our active devices, our server version, um, any activity we have on it, our paths here. Uh, we go to our general, just see some general things here, like our login disclaimer. We can do custom CSS code. Um, I'm sure that's available on MB, but I didn't see it, but that is a nice touch. Um, then our users, of course, pretty standard stuff. Our library, so if we want to display multiple libraries, our metadata, um, any devices that we have that are signed in, activity, so I'm the only user here. Then we also have our live TV and DVR, which would need to be configured. Uh, plugins. So these are a few that are on here by default. Then there's catalog to view anymore here. So we have things like Cody Sync, um, Session Cleaner. Let's see what else do we have that is neat. So, doo -doo. so we have a few here, but this is one of the other things that um, I just briefly touched on is that with Jellyfin, um, it is a newer project. It is um, completely open source and everything. So it won't have all of the exact same things. Some things might trail a little bit behind, like for instance, the catalog here. So plugins, not as many as um, as MB here, but you can add other uh, repositories, things like that to kind of expand it a bit. Not sure how fleshed out that is, but that is an option as well. And then you have your networking here. So if you want to share things out, your API keys, any logs, scheduled tasks again, which is nice to have. But so now we're just going to take a look at what it's like to actually play videos. So as much as I don't want to play a video with myself here, um, very easy, very, 
very easy. Of course, it's easy on Quest 1, but <laughs> it's still very early here. So <laughs> what we have here, very simple, like it's it's a media player. So it's going to display here. It'll be on your various devices. So I don't believe there are as many devices that you can um, um, run Jellyfin on as opposed to MB, but it is pretty close there. Um, let's get off of this video now so I don't have to look at myself anymore. And go here. And from there, I mean, that is just about um, Jellyfin in a nutshell. It is very comparable to MB and Plex. Maybe not as fleshed out as those two, but it is the newest of the trio. So with that, um, I'll kind of tie things up here and drop it over into past Zach because we already filmed the outro here. So what do you think? Are you already running Jellyfin? You're sticking with Plex or MB for now? Let me know your setup in the comments down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep dives like this one. And if you want to check out hardware that we have on offer, head on over to store.45homelab.com. I'm Zach Perry with 45 Home Lab. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. I am doing a lot of stuff with my hands today. More than usual.